So, how's it going guys? Shady here back with another deck profile and today I bring my uh, Danger Dark World deck list. Um, I've been experimenting with it uh, over the last few weeks and fine-tuning uh, this deck to be as consistent as possible. Also took some notes from uh, YCS uh, Vegas, I think, um, the the team YCS. Uh, there was a couple of Dark World players there and I took some notes from what ratios they were using and, and so on. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this deck list. So we play a uh, 40 card main deck. Uh, I just had to try and remove as much uh, as possible for uh, from this deck to try and make it as consistent as it can. Uh, because that's something that um, this deck can sometimes uh, struggle with. And uh, yeah, uh, I just managed to um, take down a few, take out a few cards from the deck to make it 40. Uh, yeah, let's start starting with the monsters uh, for our Dark World package. The three offs, uh, we're playing uh, three Genta. Three snow, no other reason to play any other monster as a tree of uh, for this uh, deck. Uh, these are just the best ones. Again, this gets you to the field spell and gets the monster uh, gets himself to the graveyard so that the field spell is always live. Uh, is just insane for your combos and you want to have him as much as you can in your hands, uh, preferably as a combo starter. Um, and Snow is just insane consistency, just searches any card, uh, any Dark World card in this deck, so uh, it's pretty nice. Then for the two offs, we have the two Rainbow and the two Beige. So, in my opinion, uh, the rank 4 package is well be way better than the uh, rank 8 package for this deck, so Instead of uh, playing more uh, uh, high-level monsters, I decided that I wanted to stick with the level 4s. Uh, so that's just my, uh, the reasoning behind uh, the 2 beige. Uh, it can help you a lot uh, in some worse uh, hands to just make, uh, for example, a Baguska and passing. Uh, you know, those really bricky hands where you have nothing to do with high level, the high-level uh, monster heavy variant. Uh, this one just deals with it better and of course Rainbow is really really nice to generate resources um, but we are not playing that much uh, targets uh, for him in terms of uh, quantity so uh, you don't really want to see multiple copies of him so the two off is nice because you want to see him sometimes not a lot Then for our one-offs, we're playing uh, the one uh, Grapha, uh, one Silver, one Gold, one Brow, and the one Cerulli. Uh, just simple, uh, really, really simple. Um, Rafa, you only need one uh, to go into the fusions, it's just a big brick in your hand uh, going first. Uh, going second, his effect is quite nice, especially since it's mandatory. Uh, but uh, one is more than fine, uh, you don't really want to see that much. Uh, Silva uh, is good for the end loop, but you normally uh, don't need more than one in your deck. Uh, it's better to play uh, the one silver, one gold for my more diversity in your capabilities than to just play two silver. Um, if you're playing against, for example, a uh, branded, which um, can just uh, use a bestial on your uh, silver, you can have the second silver like in your side deck and sw uh, switch uh, uh, any of your monsters off for the second silver so that you can still uh, end loop them uh, through the bestials. So, uh, 
uh, yeah, besides that, not really that much uh, reasoning to play multiple silvers. Uh, gold is really nice as a disruption uh, with uh, Grafa Overlord Dragon uh, because it gets two pops while doing it. Um, Brow is just really good for uh, draw power and truly is needed for the combo, but you never want to see them in your hand. That's it for our uh, Dark World Monsters. Uh, for the danger package, uh, three Mothman. Uh, it's on the, the only one that we're playing as a three of, um, because I don't have uh, access to Nessie. Uh, if I have access to Nessie, I'll probably uh, take off uh, one Mothman and one uh, Thunderbird to make space for him. Uh, but since I don't have and I need a uh, heavy amount, uh, quite heavy amount of dangers, uh, I'm playing 9. Um, I just decided to play Mothman because his second effect is better uh, than the other two and uh, it's a level 4 so it can help you in your rank 4 plays. For the two offs, we're playing uh, Dumble, uh, Double uh, Bigfoot and uh, double Thunderbird. Uh, they're mostly here because um, they're level 8 dangers. Uh, their stats don't matter uh, basically at all uh, and their second effect is useless going first and uh, only situational going second so uh, you know it, we're really just playing them because uh, we need Level, uh, level 8 monsters to summon on the field and because they're um, danger monsters. And the last two dangers we're playing uh, one uh, Jackalope, one Tushinoko. Uh, they're the best ones, unfortunately, they're limited to one, so uh, it is what it is. As I said, if you have access to uh, Nessie, play. Uh, at least two copies of Nessie, take out one Thunderbird, take out uh, the trip, the third uh, Mothman, and uh, you will see a big difference in the power of the deck. Then, uh, for uh, level 4 extenders, uh, we have uh, Luna and um, Zalamander. Uh, Zalamander is really nice because it lets you uh, discard a monster of your choice, a fiend of your choice, uh, to the graveyard, uh, any dark world that you want uh, to activate its effect. So uh, it, it it's in special summon itself. So it's basically like the dangers, but you get to pick what you send. Uh, so it's really really nice. Uh, it's also level four uh, and a fiend monster, which does come up a lot in this deck. And unfortunately, it's a hard one per turn. So. You don't want to see multiple copies of it, but it's nice to see him uh, most times, so two is more than enough. And Luna basically is uh, the only normal summon of the deck, you normal summon, and she can search for uh, another copy of herself. And quick effect, you can target one monster uh, your opponent controls. Um, they can negate the effect by sending another copy of it from the deck to the graveyard, otherwise return both to your hand, uh, which uh, can be really nice against uh, your opponent's extra deck monsters, because uh, they most likely want to be playing uh, multiple copies of it, uh, so it's it helps a lot uh, going uh, second, and in worst case scenario it's a level 4 monster that gets you to another level 4 monster. Uh, moving on to the spells, we have uh, double gates, uh, one accession, and one archives for our Dark World spells. Uh, gates is really, really um, amazing. You want to trigger it as much as you can um, during your turn. Uh, but playing it at 3, it's kind of bricky because uh, you need graveyard. Um, uh, to use it, and if you draw it on your end, uh, you most likely don't have the preparation for it. Uh, so um, it's good, you want to see as much as you can, but um, 
you don't want to see it in your starting hand, you want to search it off of Kent. So uh, two copies is more than reasonable. Um, then the one accession, it's really, really easy to search. Um, no reason to play more than one. Uh, Basically, uh, it's just your fusion um, fusion spell, uh, but it has a second effect on the graveyard to add it back to the hand by discarding... Uh, I think it's just discard one card. Uh, yeah, I guess. So, it's really, really uh, nice for the deck. Uh, but you, it's really, really searchable. You only have uh, are playing one graph, so uh, there's no reason to play multiples of it. And archives is really good, also to be searched because it can gi give you uh, two ways to discard uh, your dark world monsters to trigger their effects, and can also give you a pot of greed. So it's really really nice uh, once again uh, you just want to search it off of uh, snow basically uh, you don't want to see these cards in your hand you want to search them off of snow so there's no reason to play a bigger amount of any of them and to finish off the deck we have um, the triple lure of darkness one uh, card destruction and triple imperm so um a lot of darkness is really good for consistency uh it helps you fix in your hand a lot uh it doesn't really hurt as much uh the deck, uh, especially if you you can banish Genta off of this, and if you have the field spell, for example, or any other Dark World card, you can special summon him. So, uh, um, yeah, I just think it's really, really good way to add consistency to the deck. Uh, so I don't see why not play uh, three copies of it. Uh, card destruction is really nice. Um, if you can resolve this, um, the best... Uh, the best time to do to resolve this will be probably at the very start of your um, of your turn. Uh, you'll just get insane value by discarding four, probably uh, triggering multiple Dark World monster effects and draw four at the same time. That will be uh, really insane. Uh, besides that, it's pretty situational, but it's still a really good card to have. And in perm is just. Uh, to be an hand trap uh, for this deck. It's the best hand trap because uh, it's never uh, dead. Uh, you can have it when you, uh, when your opponent goes first during their turn because then they, it can disrupt them. You can have him doing, you can draw it for turn when going second and still not being a dead card because you can use it to help disrupt your opponent's board. You can uh, draw it while going first and set it on your, side, on your side of the field, and it's another uh, negate for your board. So it's never a dead card in, in this deck, uh, which is really important for an OTK deck, um, compared to things like Ash or uh, Nibiru, which are completely useless uh, when going second. Uh, I just think it's the best end trap. Uh, there was also some players playing uh, Lava Golem, because it's level 8, it's Fiend, so you can discard off the field spell if you break uh, if with it, it's like, it's not that much of a break, and it's just insane value going second uh, to just tribute off your opponent's monsters. But uh, I just don't have uh, the money to invest in it at the moment, I think it's 3 heroes a copy. Uh, which is uh, quite a lot uh, for a more uh, budget-friendly uh, player like me. But uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, let's go into our extra deck. Uh, for the fusions, we have the two Graph Overload, uh, Overlord of Dark World. Uh, it's really easy to make uh, in this deck. Uh, it's 3200 attack. It's an Omni Negate. And it's a beefy boss monster that floats into a graffer when uh, um, it leaves the field. 
and it's just big enough to go over uh, most uh, insane uh, disruptions like you can crash this into an Appaloosa for example or if you have this field spell you can just kill the Appaloosa uh, it's, it's just insane value uh, no no reason to play and uh, to not play it at all uh, then for our rank 4 uh, package I'm playing uh, one Dugardis uh, for combos, it's basically a, a Fiend rank 4, draws 2, discards 1, it's really nice. You just have to be careful of when you use it because you lose your next turn draw phase if you do that, uh, but it's still just really, really uh, good value for our deck. And one Baguska for uh, the awful bricks or if your board is just link monsters and you want to have another disruption, you can put Baguska because it won't affect your links, and it's gonna be like a really good floodgate. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, plan B is always nice to have uh, in a deck where rank fours are really accessible. Uh, then for rank eights, we have our Coach King and Hope Arbinger. Coach King is really insane going first because it gets you a triple draw. Uh, you just don't want to use it at all going second because it gets uh, gets you rid of your battle phase. Uh, you have to be careful about that. Um, besides that, it's really good to get your combo pieces to, to the hand when you're going for the end loop. Really insane value. Um, when, uh, when going for those uh, more... Uh, time duels, uh, you know, when uh, you're tied and it's like five minutes to the end of the match. Uh, its effect can also be uh, really, really good because it burns your opponent, so uh, the life point advantage will be uh, really nice, uh, especially uh, since you... It, yeah, it's, it's basically not, not uh, that much to talk about anymore, it's just an insane card going first, and uh, mostly useless going second. Uh, and Hope Arbinger is just spell negate going um, for your uh, going first board. Uh, if you have the resources to do so, it's uh, never a bad option. Then for our links, we have the one Akashic, one Security Dragon, one IP, and the one Nightmare Phoenix for our Link 2s. Uh, I was also uh, contemplating playing Muckracker because she uh, gives really, uh, really good value to this deck, but uh, I only have a Korean version at the moment. Um, uh, otherwise, if you have it, I would consider add it to the deck, probably uh, take out the Black Lesser Soldier that will come up in a minute. Um, besides that, uh, it's pretty solid. Uh, it's Akashi and Security Dragon are for your hand loop combo to get your uh, combo pieces back to the hand. Uh, Security Dragon, uh, yeah, uh, the same thing. IP is really good uh, for your boards to just have um, more ad adaptability to your opponent's play. And Nightmare Phoenix is just level uh, link to. Uh, Fiend type link monster that um, just can uh, can be good is effect going second, uh, but most times it's just uh, to uh, link two monsters off and have uh, uh, because it's fiend, so you can use your fiends to make a kashik uh, because we're playing a lot of dangers and uh, dangers are not the same type, so uh, you'll probably turn those dangers into a phoenix for the type and make a kashik. It's mostly uh, for that. Uh, Link three is you only play to play the nightmare. <coughs> Sorry, the nightmare unicorn and the black laser soldier. Unicorn once again, Link three very generic, very good. You can make it uh, during your opponent's turn with IP to shuffle back a card your opponent controls. Uh, you can use it going second to try and uh, break break your opponent's board. Uh, it's just really really good. And of course, BLS can be good to go over uh, some uh, more annoying um, monsters your opponent might have. Um, it's just, uh, it's not, I haven't used it as much 
uh, it's uh, when it comes up it's uh, really nice but uh, Muckracker might be better for the stack uh, so if you have access to it do it uh, yeah um, also uh, good to mention that uh, this is also a towers in this deck because you can make it with uh, your uh, Nessie if you have or your uh, level 8 uh, dark world slash danger monsters and it will be uh, immune to card dis uh, effect destruction and targeting i think so uh, that's actually really nice but it does not come up that much and link force we play saryuja and appalooza uh, not much to talk here saryuja is just really good for any of this heavy combo uh, deck to just fix your hand go look for your combo pieces and just make your uh, your end loop combo uh, not that much to discuss about it and Apollos is just generic uh, monster negates you can easily make uh, four material uh, four material Apollos in this deck or three um, so uh, really really good uh, value on those link monsters and the last card in the our extra deck is the underworld goddess uh, you uh, it's a fiend, so that's really nice if you play the Macracker because uh, you after Macracker you're locked to fiends, so that can come up, and uh, you can basically use a monster your opponent controls. So you can use it in, if you were not able to go into Akashi, and the only uh, effect that you used to return to the end was Security Dragon. Uh, you can use it to get the Cerulee off your opponent's side of the field uh, otherwise you can just um, make this with IP to uh, link off uh, one of your opponent's uh, annoying uh, towers monsters uh, so yeah uh, that's basically it for the deck list I hope you guys enjoyed it leave a like down be uh, below if you did uh, comment any questions that you might have or feedback uh, that you might want to give me, uh, subscribe to never miss any of my future videos. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.